Hey everyone, and welcome to the Indie Podcast, a show where we hear real life success stories from freelancers and entrepreneurs, the challenges they faced, and how they overcame them so that you can too. I'm your host, Brant Sohn, and today we're joined by Sebastian Gear, the CEO and co founder of Indie, a platform that gives you all the productivity tools, the resources, and the education you need to be a professional freelancer. And today we're diving deep into the world of freelancing. We'll be talking about where we think the future of freelancing is heading, our own experiences as independent workers, and what freelancers need to do right now to set themselves up for success so that they can be prepared for the coming years. Hey, Sebastian, thanks for joining us today to talk about the future of freelancing. Hey, Brand. Thanks for having me today. I'm excited. Uh, So what sparked your interest in the freelancing world? So in the very early days of starting our company, we used to regularly go to this small coffee shop in Venice Beach, and we saw all these people working from their laptops. And this was before freelancing was, let's say, as mainstream as it is today, or before it was something cool, or let's say considered as a real lifestyle orientation. And we found this fascinating. So um, uh, my, co-founder and I, my co-founder and I, we would walk up to, to, to these freelancers and ask them, like, what are you doing? What are you working on? And so we, we, every day after a while, we, we would come out to this coffee shop and start talking to these people. And everyone was saying, I'm a solopreneur. I'm an independent contractor. I'm this, I'm that. And we found this to be quite fascinating. And we came across this incredible pool of diverse, multifaceted, uh, talented individuals that were working across a super broad area of different projects and industries. And this kind of caught or grabbed uh, our attention towards this space. And we thought, how incredible is this? You know, people that are not, let's say, working in, a, in your traditional office that are out of a coffee shop, you know, creating value, building and working on engaging projects. And we envisioned this was a, to be a very exciting and interesting space. So eventually from there, John and I kind of in our imagination, envisioned a world in which we are increasingly moving towards a decentralized, fragmented and you know, distributed workforce, getting in from all over the world, working across geos and boundaries and languages and connecting together globally to create value and to do incredible things. And that was kind of the sparking point of getting excited about where this freelance movement and where the world of work was heading. And that was kind of the, the inception point of us getting excited about freelancing and getting excited about the space and ultimately you know we started and we had to work with freelancers um, to get our own company kind of off the ground and get things rolling and that was really the the inception point of us realizing hey this is huge we want to become a company that is centered around the freelancer and and here we are with indie i love that story and it brings up a really great point that even though everyone had their own unique set of skills They were all connected by their same desire for independence. So on that note, was that desire for more independence the main driving force that made you want to become an entrepreneur? Or were there any other reasons? So before I started my own business, um, I was working in a large multinational food company. And I remember every day kind of going to the office and clocking in my laptop and I had this idea, it would be great to to build something and to go and to create. Um, being independent is definitely uh, a equally rewarding and scary proposition in life. And it's about becoming your own person and setting out and trying to achieve something. And then you meet up with other independents and you, you coalize and you build unique things. So I would definitely say that I wouldn't mark it as independence. I would mark it as, because as human beings, we are never fundamentally independent. We are always somehow connected to each other. I would say it's more about freedom uh, and it's more about being able to gravitate and maneuver towards those spaces that attract you. And at the time when I left Switzerland uh, or left Europe, uh, it was exciting for me to try to build something and to kind of set out on on the adventure, which is life and try to build a career and to build an exciting space where I, which would both engage me, let's say intellectually and from a work capacity. And so I would say that was kind of the, the driving emotion was about freedom that led me ultimately to, to, to move towards starting my own business and to actually then engage with freelancers because I found 
uh, a lot of entrepreneurial traits within a freelancer is by default an entrepreneur uh, in his own right. And, um, and I think that that really fascinated me about kind of moving into this space of freedom and then connecting with freelancers on that basis as well. Yeah, and you're right. It, it does take a big leap of faith to get started because as you said, as a freelancer, you are an entrepreneur. And I feel like a lot of people avoid becoming a freelancer because they feel like they need to have everything together before they even get started. Uh, what did it look like when you first started Indie? Were you in an office? Did you have help? Uh, can you tell us more about that journey? So when we first started out, I would say, and I can tee in some advices there. My first step was desire. So everything has to start somewhere from desire. So the desire of starting something, which was at the time, you know, to start something my own. After you have found what you desire, you move kind of to the next stage, which is how do you enable your desire to become a reality? And from there, it was about finding people and connecting with people who I believed had gone through a similar trajectory as my own or had achieved certain success or achieved certain experiences that could help me and guide me a little bit in how to successfully achieve my own, let's say, desires. And so I surrounded myself with a good group of you know, mentors and advisors and, uh, um, and friends that kind of helped segue me uh, towards this new type of life that I was looking for. So in the early days, we, we, when we came to the US, uh, at the beginning, there was no office. Um, we worked out of uh, initially my, my uh, fa family member's uh, garage in, in, in uh, San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, my, my, my four-year-old son and my wife came and we kind of lived out of, out of his living room and, and, and we just kind of started out from there. Uh, so it was quite chaotic at the beginning and, uh, and we kind of had to pave our way from there to establish what it was we were trying to build, um, find people that were willing to work with us, uh, and build with us, eventually also find people who would support us from an advice, uh, and, you know, eventually also investment perspective and kind of take the company off from there. But I think every entrepreneurial journey starts kind of on your own two feet. And I've, I've had the great luck, of course, very early on to surround myself with amazing partners, um, my family, which backed me up, um, my, my wife and, 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 and my son, and, uh, and of course, my co-founder and, and the early people who joined in on the company who, who helped support and, and, and believe us. And, and that was a really exciting, um, exciting opportunity. I really relate to what you said about everyone having their own journey and everyone having to start with what you have. I feel like the most important thing in anything you do is to just get started. And it's easy to look at a successful business and think that the founder had everything together and it was this overnight success. Uh, but most of the time, that's not the case. Uh, you don't have to have the best office or the best equipment. Just start with what you have because that's going to force you to adapt to every situation, uh, which is one of the most important character traits to have when starting a business. So along with that, based on your experience as an entrepreneur, are there any essential things a freelancer needs to start their business? That's a great question. Um, so there's things that make it easier and there's things that you need. So when you speak of the things that you need, I believe that inherently perseverance hardworking attitude and tenacity if you want or grit are probably the first things that you need to get anything done from an entrepreneurial standpoint. So you eventually just need to start and you need to be ready to kind of charge through it. You need to work really hard and you need to push through and it's tough. And then I think there's things that help along the way to make that push or to make that challenge more comfortable or less painful or faster or easier. So in terms of things that you need, you don't really need a whole lot to start. You just get going and, and, and you start your business and you find a way and you're resourceful and you're hardworking, you're working around the clock. And eventually if you're applying yourself enough and with a little bit of luck and, and, and a lot of hard work, you will get there. In terms of things I would recommend before embarking on that journey, 
it's always great to have an initial network that you can rely on. In, in our case, we, you know, we, we built it along the way, but I would say uh, it's always great if you have a first network of either potential clients or people that you would work with or people who will spark some projects. It's great if you already are or have a certain basic skill set in the domain that you're trying to focus in on. So you, you, you're kind of not, let's say, the learning curve to execution curve is somehow managed. So you're able to already throughput a, a decent quality of work. It's good if you have, of course, you know, great equipment, a good office setup, and all these things are great. Those are luxuries, I think, at the beginning. Uh, you know, you don't maybe have a great chair. You maybe don't have a great office. Um, we are very lucky to today. Anyone who starts a company and has a, 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 a fantastic office chair and a nice office, like kudos to you. You're, you know, that's that's great luck. I, we we didn't have that at the beginning. We were all crammed into a small apartment with, you know, the cheapest IKEA chair we could get our hands on. So. I think that those are great things, but they are not necessities. They make life easier or more convenient. So I think I would frame it like this. You have painkillers and you have, let's say, uh, nice to haves. The only real painkiller you need is your attitude. Everything else is nice to have. You you can build your client pace on the go. You can you know improve your working setup, et cetera, et cetera. You have to continue to invest in those things, but you definitely don't need them. You you can you can you can build those on as you go. I really appreciate what you're saying to freelancers. When starting out, you're probably not going to have the best office or the best equipment. But what freelancers do have is their skill set, their willingness to work hard, and a desire to succeed. And at the end of the day, you are your own best asset. So if you had the chance to do it again, is there anything you would do differently? Um, I would say no. <laughs> no. Uh, definitely super rewarding and the journey that you go through is also super rewarding. You know, life is also about the experiences that you go through to kind of get to your end goals and those are totally worth it. Uh, you know, maybe if I would have had some more experience, I would have made a few less mistakes here. I could have, you know, garnered that experience in, in a different way, et cetera, et cetera. I would have done some, some passages differently, but fundamentally, the thrill of coming, you know, to a foreign country, starting out, finding people to work with, uh, figuring out how to get yourself off the ground, um, super scary, super hard, but great. And, and, you know, we came here, we had no clue about anything and we needed to find a way to build something successful and, um, great journey, totally worth it. So let's say what doesn't reward you in, in, you know, Let's say the traditional terms of success being, I don't know, finance and whatever, financial or whatever means, you get success on a human basis, which is, you know, you, you feel accomplished and you feel you feel alive. And, and that's also worth a lot. Yeah. And every challenge you face and overcome is only making you stronger. And you might not be where you are today had you not had to face those ups and downs along the way. Every challenge you overcome is is helping you to prepare you for the next steps. And like you were saying earlier, uh, freelancing is like running your own company, but with that challenge of having to do everything alone. So what are some of the biggest challenges you've noticed that freelancers face today? I would say all in all, freelancers today, there are three major challenges that I think face the freelancer uh, uh, in broad strokes. The first one is, how can I, as a freelancer, achieve stability? And this is probably the number one challenge. So stability meaning, you know, whereas as an employee, you're getting, you know, stable income every month. As a freelancer, you're constantly kind of trying to ensure that you have a constant inflow of projects, that your client base or client base is growing, and that every month you're getting a certain amount of, you know, work that is, that is completed and paid out. And it's not static. So if you stop hunting clients, if you stop, you know, following up on projects, it kind of just deflates. There's no paycheck at the end. So I think that's probably the number one challenge. The second challenge, it's about, I think, how can I control my business? So today, right, again, in a company, you have uh, departments that will support you to do your marketing, to do your human resources, to do your finance, etc. As a freelancer, you need to kind of figure that out on your own. So, you know, how are you going to market yourself and build up your profile? How are you going to ensure that your business is run operationally in a good way, that you're invoicing taxes, you know, project management, all of this is functioning. 
and then you have to figure out all these different softwares and setups to do so i think just literally controlling and running your business with all its facets uh is another major challenge and then the third one i would say is personal growth so as a freelancer how can you start out you know at a, at a certain point and grow yourself as a solopreneur and get from that hourly rate, which maybe started here and bring it up to a higher point, work on projects, which at the beginning maybe were more entry level projects and bring those project levels up, uh, go from being engaged around, you know, more simple types of executional solutions to more complex solutions where you might even engage other freelancers to work with to, to do something more complex, like a full brand rebuild or, you know, something like that, where you engage a couple of other solopreneurs to pull off a more complicated project. And I think, so to, to resume it, it's stability of your finances and your life, control of your work and your setup and um, growth of yourself as an individual and as a professional. I would say these are the three major cornerstones. Those are all great points. And I know for me, the biggest hurdle was just getting started and managing a freelance business. There's a lot you have to know. There's a lot you have to manage with your business from proposals to invoicing to being your own project manager, uh, which nobody comes with all those skill sets built in. And in those early months, I was feeling pretty overwhelmed and isolated. And I was wondering what were some of the major issues you faced in your beginnings and how did you deal with those challenges? So the only thing that truly matters both in work and I would say in life as a whole is the people that you spend it with and the network and the surrounding individuals that kind of make up your entourage and the people that you, you, you engage with. So as a freelancer, I would say it's all about your fellow freelancers that you work or subcontract with and your supporters, plus your client base and your work relationships, which are super important, building strong, resilient, long-term work relationships. And the same also goes, you know, as an entrepreneur, I would say all things contrary, the most important things is the people that you work with and that you spend time with. This is your most valuable asset and it's the most treasured thing that you can, let's say, have besides whatever, you know, again, financial outcomes may, may, may produce because at the end of the day, success is nothing else but the outcome of working with great people and you know, putting in the the, the 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 grit and the effort to pull something off, and, and and a few you know, and a few pinches of luck here and there, and I believe that success is an outcome. But along the pursuit of success, what you get as secondary huge rewards is an incredible group of people to spend the time with that you dedicated to achieving that success. And these are your coworkers, your your network, the people that you 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 spend copious amounts of hours with every day trying to accomplish and solve for something. And I would say that would probably be the number one challenge is finding those people, finding those clients, finding that team or those those individuals with whom you really mesh with intellectually and on a value basis to create something with. Once you find them, treasure them, treat them well, challenge them. Um, and keep relying on them. And I think that that is true whether you're talking you know, about your clients or whether you're talking about your coworkers or your business partners. I love that you mentioned how it's all about the people you work with and finding a supportive community because with freelancing, I think everyone's instinct, or at least it was for me, is that once you leave a company and go out on your own, that you have to do everything on your own suddenly. But it's important that you find that community uh, there's a, a lot of freelancers out there doing the same thing and you can find them in Facebook groups along with joining the indie community, but it's important to find a good group of people to go on the journey with. So for people who are just starting out and they're looking for their first few clients and a group of freelancers to connect with, how did you open those first doors and start making those early connections? First things first, I would say, and I can throw out an interesting data point here, but Three quarters of all employment activity, whether across freelancing or just general employment, goes through referral, word of mouth, and network. So real success or real work, most of it is found, you know, not just straight through job boards or whatever platforms, but is found through the network of people that you know and meet and connect along the way. So from that perspective, I would say 
at the early stages, finding that network for us was about, I did a lot of cold outreach at the beginning. Um, the first people who helped us were, a lot of them were cold outreach, reaching out to people, trying to engage with them, saying, hey, I'm working on this cool project. Would you like to know more about it? And and a lot of trial and error and just contacting and, and meeting with people. And, you know, you, you on, a, on 50 people that you meet or 60 people that you meet, you find one person who's like, hey, this is a great connection. I want to I wanna partner with this person and work together as a freelancer on, you know, 50 clients or, you know, 50 events or, you know, 50 people that you meet at an event. You might get one or two really great leads that 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 you know become great clients of yours, and and every year they might work with you for you know a certain amount of projects. And if you have you know ten, twenty, thirty clients like that, that's your business. And uh, I think I think that network needs to be built proactively. I believe in cold outreach. I believe in you know attending networking events, being participating in different communities, and and uh, you need to you know invest in that. Right, and and once you get those first few connections, it really does snowball from there. You start getting referrals, and your network keeps building surprisingly fast once you get started. And I, I think another important aspect of trying any new venture is not just getting started, but being committed to following through with it. So how do you know that you're on the right track towards success so that you don't give up right when you're on the edge of a breakthrough. Because I, I feel like a lot of people, freelancers included, work and work and work and then quit right when they were about to see that success. So how do you know when you're on the right path to success so that you don't give up along the way? I would say it's important to have self-discipline. Probably the most important thing. Set yourself personal and professional targets that you would like to hit and reevaluate those targets religiously every week, every month. If you said this week, I'm going to find, or I'm going to reach out to 50 new potential clients, do it. If you do it, you've achieved success. So I think success needs, you need to determine for yourself what is success for you and how are you measuring that? And then you need to choose the right method of measurement for success at the right stage of your business. So if you're just starting out as a freelancer, probably your right measure of success at the, like your first week should be how many people did I reach out to? What's the response rate of, 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 of clients getting back to me? Eventually, you're going to want to look at, you know, how, how many people hired me for the month? What's my repeat business? How many people of the people that I work with rehire me down the road? How many referrals did I get? So for example, if you worked with, uh, a, um, if, you, if a new client reaches out to you, what's the rate of customers that are coming from you reaching out cold or networking versus the amount of customers that you're getting through referral? And I think it's about setting your goals against those targets. So success would be in your first week, like I said, I would reach out to 50 people. I did it. Uh, I said I would, on 50 people that I reach out to, I would close one deal. I closed it and to set yourself those targets and then progressively tweak them up and make them more aggressive. I love your answer to how you measure success because it's not just about the big goal, but setting and achieving all of the small goals along the way that get you to the big goal and that success that you envision for your business. And then just see what worked and what didn't work and what you can change. And when you're hitting those goals, then I think it's just a matter of time before you reach the ultimate goal that you're looking for. Um, now I wanna switch gears for a moment because the pandemic has dramatically changed the way we work in such a short time. Uh, overnight, everyone had to figure out what working remotely looks like from businesses to the school system. And now in 2022, 16% of companies around the world are 100% remote and staying that way. Uh, with more businesses than ever being open to remote workers and working with freelancers, where do you see the future of work heading? In, in terms of the, the future of work, I believe that we are moving towards a work environment that is going to be increasingly decentralized and distributed and in its own right, let's say fragmented. I believe that work is going to become and workforces will become more fluid. And I do believe that we are moving into a space where you have, you know, in a utopian view, you would have, you know, billions of people across the globe that have different types of skill sets. 
and technology is enabling to bring together the right people with the right skill sets and they can instantly collaborate and create value and then disassemble and reconnect with other types of people in a very fluid way. I believe we are moving towards a more fluid, again, decentralized and distributed work model versus a more rigid, you know, work model where, you know, everyone has to be physically together working on this project. You stay on the same project for months. It's only you. I think this is going to change. I think things are going to move much faster and we're going to see assembly, disassembly and movement and a lot of digital work moving forward uh, in the coming, you know, 10 to 20 years. And uh, that's, I think, where we are heading. Yeah, the pace of technology is really accelerating the need for for teams to be able to adapt quickly to these changes. And I think we're going to start seeing more and more freelancers in the future. And because of that, freelancers need a better way to get work done. I, I mean, Forbes predicts that by 2028, freelancing will overtake full-time employment. And in the U.S. alone, 90 million workers will be freelancers. So... These challenges we mentioned earlier are only going to increase. Uh, so my question is, with that many people freelancing, how do you stand out from the competition? Because I could imagine that it might be similar to the way that founders of startups need to stand out from other startups when raising money from investors. So how is Indie helping freelancers stand out? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So today we kind of split up so we speak about competition specifically we split up our competition in kind of four cohorts one cohort is around let's say what we call singular solutions or singular solutions for freelancers or single software solutions and one cohort is ecosystems or platforms that provide a variety of solutions and then on the other end we have what we say are solutions for enterprises or mid to large size businesses and solutions for freelancers. I believe that today a large portion of the productivity software and systems that are out there are still quite heavily catered to either individual functions. So actually take Zoom, <laughs> right? Uh, it's, it, it does one purpose and that's all it does. Um, so as an individual, you have to patch together all of these single solutions and kind of build out and integrate and, you know, stick together and custom build your technology setup. But this is a lot of work. It's expensive and it's quite time consuming. And there's a learning curve to it. And then on the other spectrum, what we have is a lot of enterprise software and a lot of enterprise solutions. So I believe that there's a lot of incredibly powerful software out there and powerful solutions, but they are most products that are out there today are still really catered uh, towards the enterprise and provide mainly you know high level of functionality at high prices and and complex solutions that are kind of not really designed for the freelancer in in, in essence they are softwares that are designed for larger companies um, um, to to run their project management or or to run and they come with a whole fleet of features and, and and complexity and price points that the freelancer doesn't really need. So the sweet spot for us at Indie really is providing extremely easy to use, extremely affordable products and services that provide to the freelancer exactly what he or she needs to be able to run their business out of the box. So uh, it's about providing a higher level of simplicity. Uh, at a price point that is accessible for an individual user so he doesn't have to patch together a bunch of different softwares and, and solutions or, or opt for a more expensive enterprise solution. And that's a sweet spot for us. When we think of the top freelance companies out there today, um, you know, we envision Fiverr or we envision Upwork. These are kind of the, the big freelance companies that are out there. I believe that we want to try to build a platform that is really catered to the freelancer um, where the freelancer owns the relationship that he or she will have with their client so that you know Fiverr and Upwork tend to own the relationship and continuously take let's say a commission on that relationship. India is about empowering the freelancer and giving him or her the services that they need to be able to run their business from start to end and the relationship that you have with your client uh, that's something sacred we don't we don't really touch that we want to be there to provide you great software we want to be there to provide you ways to connect with other freelancers and we want to be there to provide you great content that can help you become a better freelancer and try to keep the business model as simple as possible, um, meaning, you know, essentially uh, uh, it's free 
and and if if you really like it and there's some special features that you want to use then yes there's a premium that you can you can upgrade for that's what excites me about being part of the indie team is that we're able to come alongside freelancers wherever they are in their journey to help them succeed and had i only known that a company like indie existed my journey would have been so much easier i mean they say 50 percent of freelancers fail in their first year and I know when I first started freelancing, I felt pretty isolated and unprepared. And I would have loved to have had any kind of support in those first few months. Um, so what are what are some things that Indie is currently doing to help freelancers in their journey from people just starting out to professional freelancers? Mm -hmm. So I think, first of all, I would say from a, from a mission standpoint, uh, Brand, our goal is to empower freelancers across the globe. And from that standpoint, we really want to ensure that we are providing great value, great ease of use, and always a great price. And these were, let's say, would be the fundaments of, 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 of what we're trying to do to help freelancers is we want to provide them best in class products and services at a price that is right for them and doesn't break the bank. And I think this is a, this is deeply ingrained in, in, in how we approach uh, the design of our products and the services that we that 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 we that we provision. I think alongside that, um, as we as we build out the 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 ecosystem of our products and services, and 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 kind of want to become this go-to destination for freelancers to just live and and run their business. I think platforms like uh, uh, our content platform that we that we continue to evolve, which provides freelancers access to you know pretty big you know hundreds of different articles around freelancing and client management and templates. Um, we look forward to taking that to the next level moving forward um, with unique uh, and special content that is really catered to helping the great professional who might not be a great freelancer become a great freelancer. Because what we've also came to came to learn is that sometimes you'll you'll, you'll have great professionals that don't make the best freelancers. So uh, what can we do to, to to coach them and to provide, let's say, you know, unique value in the form of content uh, that is helping them to to learn how to be better freelancers. Um, in addition to that, you know, anyone who engages with, with our products and services, we, we, we are always there. So we're always happy to, to provide customer support, uh, if it's needed and, and, um, and our team is proactively engaging, you know, incoming questions or challenges around the product. Um, we're there to support our customers and, and answer them and fix the product or edit the product or add new additions as, as feedback comes in. That's something we really value. And I would say the third, a third big point to that is, as indie continues to grow as a as a go to destination and first choice for freelancers to run their business from, we look forward to connecting all freelancers who use indie with each other uh, within a great community, so they can start engaging and 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 building value with each other and 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 building that that network that we were discussing in the early stage of our of our interview. That's a great point that professionals don't always make great freelancers, which is interesting because there are universities that teach you the hard skills. You need like how to be a web developer or a writer or a graphic designer. You can learn those hard skills, but there's a lot of soft skills that go into freelancing that don't always translate over from traditional employment. And there isn't a place for you to just go and learn how to be a freelancer. And I think what Indy is doing with the Indy University is super important because now freelancers will have one place where they can get the information they need about freelancing that catches a lot of freelancers off guard when they get started. Uh, things like how to handle taxes and uh, where to find their first clients and how to grow their business and how to navigate all these important areas that freelancers need to know about, uh, which is gonna be important moving forward as freelancing more and more becomes the future of work. The fact that you are a great designer, you studied how to design, does not mean that you will be a successful freelancer. Are two different things and I believe that if we can at least help to manage the whole business side of things and we can help you to maintain a professionally running well-oiled machine so that you can do the things that you do great as a designer that's already a good portion of the battle has already won um, so that's just something I wanted to to highlight to that note as well it's like we can't make you a great designer but we can help you with everything else that you need to be great at to be a successful freelance designer. That's so true that a big portion of the battle is in the business side of freelancing. 
you can have a strong skill set and be comfortable in your area of expertise, but the business side can derail you really fast. So to wrap this discussion up, is there any final advice or words that you would like to say to the people who are listening, who are maybe just getting started freelancing or are feeling a little lost in how to manage or grow their business? I'll share the same advice as I got very early on when we started our company. Don't get lost. Don't lose the flame and keep going. So my advice would be don't lose yourself on the day-to-day work. Don't lose your passion that brought you there in the first place and keep going. Don't give up. And I would say alongside all of that, surround yourself with an incredible group of coworkers, clients, people that you love and trust and enjoy working with, because that makes the journey, no matter where the destination leads you so much more enjoyable. Well, thanks Sebastian for talking to us today about freelancing and the future of work. I think there's a lot of insight in your story that can be applied to freelancers and how they can approach running their own businesses. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Brent. Take care. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for watching today's episode. And if you're listening and you're looking for an easier way to manage your freelance business, you can sign up to Indie for free to get the productivity tools, the resources, and the tips to grow your freelance business. Thanks again for tuning in. Mm